Here in this video, we would like to derive an expression for the velocity of a transverse wave in a stretched string. So, how does it looks like velocity of in a stretched string? Let me first of all draw, right? So, if a vibration of the particle is perpendicular to the direction of a wave motion, that kind of a motion is called transverse wave. So, the wave motion is along this axis, vibration of the particle C is along y axis. This kind of a motion is called transverse wave. In this transverse wave, this wave is having certain velocity. I want to know how much is that velocity is. I want to derive an expression for the velocity of a stretched string. So, let us consider a small portion of that stretched string, what I am like highlighting right now, this is small portion, redraw that small part and derive an expression for the velocity in that small part which is applicable for the entire wave itself. So, I am just uh, redrawing this part like what I have highlighted uh, with a blue color, yeah. Now, I will draw that part. This is that part. It's drawing a little wide so that we can work on the parameters that whatever we need. So this portion, what the string that what I have drawn is the highlighted part that I am talking about. Only this part of the spring I have just magnified and redrawn into a bigger picture so that we can understand what are we talking about. The string is having a certain length. Let the length of that small portion is dl. Its mass is also small automatically. Mass of small portion is dm. Then we can uh, further write if you want linear density. The name itself says linear means along length shown with a letter mu as mass per unit length. So, in this case dm by dl. So, so from here further we can write if it is required dm is mu into dl, where mu is called as a linear density. So, the important point, point that I would like to tell you is, uh, if you notice little uh, carefully, this what we have drawn is a uh, part of a circular motion. So, any oscillatory motion is actually a part of a circular motion. So, if you uh, consider here, see, this is a small portion we are talking about. But if you consider, if you just extend the dotted lines, it becomes a part of circular motion. So, whenever there is a circular motion, it needs a force called centripetal force. We know centripetal force, we have derived an expression for that earlier itself is mv square by r. Uh, assuming like this circle, if I just extend these lines, will have a certain radius and this is that radius r. So, this uh, centripetal force in this case can be found, can be written as Centripetal force, be as this is a part of a circular motion, is mv square by r, but m is nothing but a dm. So I can write dmv square by r. This is the centripetal force, as the part of the string is making a total angle theta. If I draw a vertical line from there, that theta can be divided as theta by two and theta by two. Now, I want to identify who is providing this centripetal force in this given situation. 
so let's extend our discussion further yeah because this string is tight it must be having some tension inside it let the tension is equal to t now if i extend the vertical line here as this angle is theta by 2 this angle also becomes theta by 2 automatically this angle as tangent is perpendicular to this line it becomes 90 minus theta by 2 so it's very clear that this tension can be resolved into components this becomes an adjacent component how much is that t cos at an angle 90 minus theta by 2 so it becomes t sin theta by 2 down the vertical line the other component becomes t sin theta, sorry this is already t sin theta by 2 so this becomes cos theta by 2 we can just extend this uh, discussion to the other part of the string also see carefully tension is always along the tangential line tension t as this angle is theta by 2 if i draw a vertical line this also becomes theta by 2 this is normal this radius is normal so this angle becomes automatically 90 minus theta by 2 so for the tension this becomes horizontal component p e cos of course with an angle 90 minus theta by 2 that is equal to t sin theta by 2 this is becomes the other component t cos theta by 2 so if you notice carefully this t sin theta by 2 and this t sin theta by 2 together are acting towards the center when you imagine a center like this like this right i have not here what i am showing that same a part of a circular motion so the total force that implies what we can say that implies total force acting towards the center of that small piece small string is this t sin theta by 2 as well as this t sin theta by 2 together 2t two sin theta by 2 this force provides the necessary centripetal force but be careful i want to tell you one point as the string is small theta is small as theta is small theta by 2 is also small as theta by 2 is small sin theta by 2 is close to theta by 2 itself we know this sin 0 is 0 when the angle is small sin theta and theta are close to each other that implies you can write centripetal force as 2t in place of sin theta by 2 i can write theta by 2 itself 2 and 2 can be cancelled it is t into theta what is that theta this is the total angle theta so what is the value of that uh, theta we can write angle is always defined as arc by radius arc value is this part of the string that's the length of the string dl by radius is r itself so in the place of centripetal force i can write t into theta means arc by radius dl by r 
So I know the entire centripetal force T into dl by r which is equivalent to mv square by r dm r dm into v square by r. So this force provides the necessary centripetal force. So I can equate this centripetal force to the expression of the centripetal force. So what happens in that case? That implies centripetal force as I shown here dm into v square by r is because of all the forces acting towards the center of that small string as a tension into dl by r. This r and r can be cancelled. Velocity square can be written like tension into dl by dm. As I told you earlier, dm by dl is linear density. This is dl by dm reciprocal of that. So, t by linear density. That is the square of the velocity of a stretched string. So, velocity in a stretched string is root of tension by linear density. That's the expression for the velocity of a wave in a stretched string. V equal to root of tension by linear density. So, the entire derivation simply depends on one point that whenever there is a circular uh, oscillatory motion, it's a part of a circular motion, it need to have certain centripetal force. I have found that centripetal force and just equated both of them. That's how we can derive an expression for the velocity of a wave in a structured string. That's it. Thank you for watching.